we're already at 60 to 80 percent chronically ill. That number is just going to keep going up and up. Why do you think more people aren't as alarmed as probably me and you are? I mean, we know we have, there are communities out there, but the majority of healthcare right now is kind of going with the same path. Keep throwing drugs at it. Keep, you know, big pharma, everything like that. What do you think it is that people aren't seeing that this isn't sustainable? Oh, man. Well, look, it's the most vexing problem on the planet, right? Because there's so many factors that go into it. It's not just one thing, right? You could say, well, it's the food, but then you realize it's the environment, it's the air and the food. You know, there's all that kind of stuff. But then it's the social side of it, the social determinants of health that drive it. You know, there's there's all kinds of 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 sort of factors that play into it. So it's complex and multifactorial. Um, You know, I think there's been a big shift in the last 17 years. I think a lot of people know now that chronic disease can be reversed, Mm. right? I think, you know, if you look to, you know, where we were in 2005, I mean, you basically have no podcasts, no summits, no books, no content that's being created, no people showcasing their own, you know, transformation of their own healing journey to reverse a chronic illness. So I think the last 17 years has seen as, as the sort of, um, the ability to publish went from something that was only very narrow to something that's very broad. We've seen, you know, thousands of people publishing their own story of chronic disease reversal, or in the case of, you know, some physicians and other people showcasing like strategies for specific areas. So, you know, that's been transformational, I think, for the general public to understand that that chronic disease is, is reversible. So I think that's been a big, a big step, but, you know, sort of, it's kind of obvious on a one-to-one basis. It's like, okay, I can read this book and I can take action for myself. What I, what I think there is a big gap in, and possibly you and I are aligned on that too, is really thinking about how can that knowledge be deployed at a meaningful enough scale to actually tackle the problem at the level that it exists. And that's something that, you know, I've just been thinking about for 17 years. Um, My first efforts at it were, well, the first, the first thing is that I learned for like seven years. So I, I worked um, in that clinic. I saw chronic disease being reversed. Then I wanted to know, is this just a one-off or are there many other clinics that are doing similar things where the results are the same? And so I took a job selling to those kind of clinics. And I saw that there's a lot of different sub niches of alternative medicine where there's a lot of great work being done. They don't have a common language. They don't have a current, you know, a common thesis. They don't even have a common set of tools. There is a lot that they do in common, but ultimately like there's, it's just very siloed. And so that was what I learned for a while. And then in 2014, I sort of started to, it was nine years into it was when I really did the first thing that took off. And that was really trying to, one, bring all those types of practitioners together into one room, two, talk about how there could be a common language. And that was sort of some of the foundations that I thought needed to be there. So you could build provider teams that could work together and and do it in a more resource efficient way. So, you know, it's just been a process of of learning and trying to understand all the different factors, seeing where there's friction, seeing where there's pressure, seeing where there's opportunity. And then like yourself, like I think that commerce is a really powerful tool. And if if done well, can lead to the kind of significant changes that um that we need to see. And so, you know, it's it's a it's a learning process in progress. And that that uh, you know whole of adventure you did in 2014 was that the start of the functional form yeah exactly so yeah. you know in Tell 2011 i got my first speaking gig speaking to doctors so there was a conference called um what was it called heal thy practice and it was mm. for doctors that. that had like were wanting wanted to leave conventional care and wanted to try and practice in a new way. And it was sort of a practice management conference. And I got to speak at that conference and that gave me a lot of confidence to think that my ideas were valuable and that like, I did have a unique viewpoint on the state of medicine and that like, especially as you know, at that time, 2011, you really have the beginning of this sort of um, medicine meeting technology too, right? Where there's the first electronic health records and there's the possibility for telemedicine and, you know, those kind of things. So 
from 2011 to 2013, I did some of that. So I started speaking at conferences and, and sharing sort of my ideas on practice management. Yeah, and then 2014, I'd been out to LA. We did an event in LA in 2011, and I recognized in LA, there was a meetup for all doctors that were interested in doing sort of different models of integrative functional lifestyle medicine, but there wasn't anything like that in New York. So the Functional Forum started in January 2014, as a as initially a, a meetup for doctors who were interested in that kind of care. But we also, I had done so many small events over the preceding seven years and sort of recognized how to do those in an effective way. And so the Functional Forum became like a live studio audience show. So there'd be some mingling before and connecting, and then there'd be a 90 minute live show. And at that time, there was really no content online for free that was for doctors that were interested in this kind of care. And so we just were kind of like the right thing at the right time. And where the biggest conference in the space was probably a thousand doctors, you know, by the eighth episode, we had 30,000 watching just because it was free and anyone could watch it anywhere in the world, no matter if you were in Nebraska or India or Australia or New York. And so that was sort of the beginning of, I guess, me having some influence in the functional medicine world. Yeah, no, I remember when that first started. I was in New York City as well, and I was still uh, working at and with a practice at the time, and then working a lot on the corporate side too. But that that took off, and that that did really well, and it showed the need for for practitioners to come together because I am just like you. I've found a lot of disjointment within integrative and holistic healthcare. You know, you have a lot of these great specialties, but a lot of them are still working like conventional medicine as specialists. And not yeah. speaking together in their own niches, just sitting there. 